الحدامات برلمانت السويد روبرت حنا Now we'll have a presentation by Swedish Parliament member Robert Hanna, and then he can take some questions. But please, short questions, not lectures. Thank you. Shalom alaikum. Shalom. I will take this in English because this was what I was told. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and welcome to my hometown, uh, Gothenburg. And actually. I was raised in this place. If you see the red brick houses above here, it's called Brilliant Gatan Topaz Gatan. This is actually where I was born and not born but raised. And uh, my father, uh, he was a singer. Uh, his name was George Hanna, and he sang here during maybe every every month when I was when I grew up. And I actually I basically grew up in this. Uh, in this room that you're seeing here today. So this is actually, I would say, the heart of the Assyrian community here in Gothenburg. And as a member of parliament for the city of Gothenburg, I'm very honored and pleasured to uh, welcome you here. And I'm very happy to see that we have the first uh, meeting of, annual meeting of the Confederation. And I hope that this will be uh, something that we can continue and build on. Um, and uh, I think this is the great start. So. I was told by uh, Afram and the Syrian Federation of Sweden to talk about lobbyism or talk about how to influence Swedish politics or how they have influenced Swedish politics and I have influenced Swedish politics and how you can do the same thing on the European level because we're all here because we have a mission. We all believe in Assyrian politics, we believe in Assyrian issues. So, you know. I could stand here and talk about what I do in the Swedish parliament, but I think it's even better if I actually talk here about how we can influence more as an Assyrian nation the politics of your own nations, but also the politics of the European Union and the politics in our homeland. Let's take the next one. So I'm going to have a, a, a short presentation, maybe 20 minutes, to talk about how, how you can actually influence politics. And uh, then we're going to have a small discussion, and I will also, of course, talk about what I do. Um, but I, people think it's rocket science. This is why I put this uh, picture up here. People think that politics is rocket science, but actually it's mostly about human relations. Uh, I became a member of parliament in 2014. I was personally elected. I'm one of ten members of parliament who are personally elected, who wouldn't be in parliament if they didn't get the votes of their people. And I got personally elected here in the city of Gothenburg. Uh, raising lots of my votes actually in the Assyrian community of Gothenburg. So actually I have the, the Swedish Assyrians to thank that I'm actually in the Swedish parliament. So I have done this journey not by myself but with the help of the Assyrian Federation of Sweden. I've had the help of the Assyrian, Assyrian community here in Gothenburg. Uh, we have a lot of people in this room who helped me campaigning. And people told me I, I wouldn't be able to make it. Even members of the Swedish government were telling me, you can't make it, you can't get personally elected to the Swedish parliament. And I proved them wrong. And actually, I, 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 as, I, as I said in this presentation, how to kick ass in lobbyism is also about kicking ass in politics in general. Because if you look at the uh, Assyrian community in general, they have not been very active in politics. They have not been active in party politics. If you see the members of... Of, of, of the Swedish political parties, there's have been a, there's been a few members of, of of the political parties, but there have also always only been older gentlemen who you know who made it. But now we're seeing a new trend with young the the younger generation of the student community here in Sweden who are getting active in Swedish politics, who are making it, who are, who are actually we're also becoming more equal. We have a lot of girls actually getting involved in Swedish politics, and I think. Becoming a member of parliament, I ask, actually not only can influence you know, the Swedish politics, I can also influence young Assyrians here in Sweden and other places to actually get involved themselves. So we're actually seeing, you know, how would you say, we can say, you can say we have, we're seeing a journey that we've just started and I think that we, we have a lot of success that we can look up on. And I, I, I would honestly want to say that the Assyrian Federation of Sweden is probably the best lobbyists in Sweden when it comes to na national organizations. They are easily the best ones, the ones to get into the media. So actually, Afram could be holding this seminar and this presentation that I'm holding, but I think I'm going to do it because he asked me to. 
So I'm just telling you, politics is not rocket science. It's about you know affecting people. It's about having a message. It's about being having a perspective and actually having goals that you're working towards. So let's have the next slide. So what you have to actually experience when you're talking about politics is we, you know when I, when you have a Swedish and Syrian federations coming to politicians, uh, you're only thinking as a Syrian federation about a Syrian politics, a Syrian issues. But as a politician, I am a member of parliament. I, I sit in the par party board of my party now, and and I have a lot of other things to think about. So this is your competition, if you put it that way. Uh, raising a Syrian issues is very important, but for a politician, they have other perspectives. They have, you know, uh, the, the issue of Russia. They have integration in here in Sweden and Europe that, is, that it, we have a lot of difficulties with that. We have Brexit. We have, you know, the welfare state to take care of. We have the, the war in Syria to think about. Not only the, Syrian, the situation for the Assyrian Syrians, but also for everyone. We have the climate change, we have you know, Donald Trump to think about, we have uh, equality to think about, we have you know, uh, security to think about, we have uh, the, you know, digitalization to think about, you know, the future. So you have to have that perspective when you're lobbying as an Assyrian and for Assyrian issues that you know, when you're talking to a politician, that politician needs to fit the Assyrian issue into the frame and you have to be able to you know, convince them that your issue is important, that your issue actually matters. And if you're just thinking, if you don't have the perspective that you are competing with others, other uh, political, you know, other political areas, you're going to lose. You have to have that in perspective. You have to tell them why this issue is more important than other issues, or, or you have to tell them how it fits in. For example, here in Sweden, I try to, every time that we talk about integration here in Sweden of, of immigrants, I always talk about the Assyrian community as a leading example. And you want to be that leading example. You want to be, you know, a positive example for the Swedish society, and th th that's extremely important. And I'm going to get to it, but this is a very important thing to think about. We're not the only ones here. Size matters. This is actually a, a, a part of the uh, uh, women's uh, uh, union in my party. They have this uh, com commercial where it says, "Size does matter. Uh, wage after uh, well." how you uh, work, not based on your gender. And what they say is that size matters. I put this number here, 120,000 people. What does that mean? 120,000 people is the number of people from our nation here in Sweden. We are 120,000 people. This is the first thing that I always inform politicians about. We are not a small group that doesn't matter. We are a big group with 120,000 people. We're more than 1%. We are, we are more than 1% of the Swedish nation today. And we do matter. And you have to decide if you want to be a small player or a big player. And if you decide that you're a big player, then you're going to act like a big player and you're going to be met as a big player. When, when the Syrian Federation in Sweden is out talking to politicians, they know that they need our support because we are 1%. You know, whenever something happens in Swedish politics and that affects the Syrian people, believe me, that the, lead, the people that are leading the municipality in Södertälje, for example, get scared because they know that the voters you know, can change because of that. So we do matter as a group. We are one of the biggest minorities of Sweden and we need to tell people this all the time. This is the first thing you need to tell people. And it will be the same way in the, in the European uh, Confederation, because I, I guesstimation it would be that we are one of the biggest minorities without a nation in the European Union, and we do matter. Our views do matter. We need to tell people this, and they need to understand it. And actually, the biggest and most important thing is to act that way. And as a nation, as a people, uh, you need to understand it's all about storytelling. Now, what picture of the Assyrian nation, of the Assyrian people, do you want Swedish politics, politicians, American politicians, European politicians to have? Do you want them to think of us as, you know, uh, petty, uh, unsuccessful, uh, not, you know, likable? It's going to matter. If they see the Assyrian nation and Assyrian people as a positive, successful group that has integrated well, that have own half of the businesses here in Gothenburg that are successful, that, that have young politicians, that actually have equality between the genders, Swedish politicians, European politicians are going to like you more. And believe me, I have some politicians, some groups that I don't want to work with because I feel like they are, you know, uh, 
their, their reputation is not good. So it's all about storytelling. If you want to tell the story, this is one of, the, one of my voters, actually. Uh, and she's from here. She's a Syrian. And I was asking her the story of her life. And, and actually, she had a couple of, of, of um, uh, tattoos on her hands because she's very old. She's from the uh, St. Gobian uh, church just around here in the corner. And I met her during my elections, and I got the opportunity to speak to her. And, and I was asking about the, her tattoos here, and she told me, oh, don't care about these tattoos, look at this one. And she showed me the, the other tattoos that she had here. And she told me, this is, this is from my pilgrimage to, to Jerusalem just a couple of years ago. And after this trip, I can die happily. This is all I wanted to do with my life. This is the positive stories of, of you know, a church in a community that is successful here in Gothenburg, who has successful members, who have stories that can tell that are compassionate. The stories that we want to tell is about you know, a positive nation, a positive people who, who are friendly, who are successful, who want to partake in the Swedish society. This is extremely, extremely important for Swedish politicians in the way of, of them wanting to cooperate with the group. So uh, to, to, to tell the story of, of, of a successful group is extremely important. So storytelling, next one. And you need to understand the political game. I, I am in the politi game, political game every day. If you watch TV shows like Game of Thrones or, or uh, I don't know, any, any show about politics, it is true, you see those dimensions. As a politician, there's always the political game that you have to you know, be a part of. You can play the political game. I, I, let, let me take a, a very, very easy example of this. Uh, Safe. It is a, an extremely good example of this. Some politicians, most politicians work, the, the minority of the politicians work about, when they decide on the matter, they decide on what's right and wrong. You know, Turkey committed genocide. It was wrong. They haven't, they haven't you know, acknowledged it. It was wrong. So, I'm going to be for acknowledging SAFO. And a lot of politicians, when they're out of you know, government, they will be for it. So I, I worked actively, you know, taking the, 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 the social democrats for running the country right now, you know, making them take a stand on this issue. Now that they are in government, they have another opinion, because they have a benefit and cost analysis, and what are the risks, instead of, you know, what's right and wrong. You have to understand the political game. If, I, if the Swedish government would, you know, acknowledge SAFO, then Turkey would be very mad at them. And they also have the migration crisis to think about, and they have other things to think about. So you have to understand, you know, what are the risks, what are the costs, and what, how can I convince them to think like the way we do. As a member of parliament, now that, now that the Syrian Federation, for example, helped me to get into Swedish parliament, I, um, the Minister of Foreign Affairs say that I prescribe on <laughs> debates with her on the SAFO and other Assyrian matters. And because, because you got me in there, because you helped me to get in there, I can every month meet with the Minister of, of Foreign Affairs and tell them, you know, when you were outside of government, you were saying, you know, it was the right thing to do, to acknowledge SAFO. But now that you're in government, you think it costs too much. So, as a politician, you need to understand that this is the matters that we think. And as a Syrian politician, I can be, you know, a pain in the ass to the, the, to the government because I can always remind them of their promises and the cost analysis. So they are also are always thinking, you know, how will the Assyrian voters think about us if we don't acknowledge it? So that's also a cost. The more, the more we talk about it, the numbers, the, the numbers of people that we are, the more it will matter to them. So, so numbers do matter. Size does matter. Next one, please. Political inclusion also matters. This is actually taken in this room before it was renovated. They've renovated this hall. But this is actually taken in this room with my campaign. What I did, there's, there's a difference between you know, talking to people. There's a difference between having um, politicians come to the Syrian community and talk to them about politics and, talk and give them their political views. And the difference is inclusion. You know? If a political party wants to have the Assyrian community's votes, they need to have Assyrian politicians. They need to include Assyrians in the politics. So, what I do a lot is I tell the Assyrian young kids, you need to get involved. Because if you're included in politics, look, when I got involved in my political party, I could easily just give a phone call or an email to the ministers of government belonging to my party, which we did at that point. You know, whenever there was a demonstration, they would call me, they would say, what should I say? And I could teach them. 
being involved in the political scene instead of being outside of the political scene is much, much more important and it gives more value, you know? We have girls here like, like uh, Hadra, no, she's here. Maybe she's not here today. But she's involved in the Social Democratic Party and that matters because if the Social Dem wants information on the Assyrian community, they will call her. Whenever there's a demonstration on Assyrian issues, they'll call me and I can give them the right information, you know, the right information that we want them to say. So this is extremely important to, to, to when you talk to political parties, also demand inclusion, also demand that you are part of, instead of sitting outside the table, you want to sit inside the table. Next one, please. And this is very important when it comes to Assyrian issues. I can tell you, no matter how I do it, no matter which name I use, no matter what name I don't use, we have a name conflict, we do. And I can tell you honestly that, that we have a, we have, a, we have a hill to climb because when it comes to our names, we have different names. There's, there's a conflict in this issue. And I can tell you, the best thing to do is ignore the haters. If you know what you want to call yourself, just work it that way. And you can be the best at it. If you're the best at it, then that's what they're going to call you. And that's who they're going to call. So you can have a conflict, but you're never going to resolve it. You can only work you know, forward. I have decided how I, you know, call myself, and I'm proud of calling myself a Syrian. If you want to call me something else, you can call me something else, but I always call myself what I am, and that's a Syrian. And it's extremely important. It's extremely important to see the way forward, because if I decide that I'm going to call myself other things just to make some people happy, it's not going to make myself happy. So deciding on, you know, working with the people that you can actually work with and work forward to your own issues. You know, that there are other parts of the cer a certain community who use other names who, who do good things as well. I can say hi to them, I can be friendly with them, but I have my view and I want to work straight you know, forward and I'm going to be clear on my point of view because if I'm not clear, then the politicians are also going to be unclear. I can be very frank with you that, to say that there is an issue, you know, when people call us Christians, it's not that they don't know that we are also called Assyrians. It's that because they don't want to take a stand. It's because you know they they're afraid of you know you know climbing on people uh, and making people upset. So we need to be more focused on you know telling our story, telling our work, and, and teamwork. You know we have to work together, of course, but we're going to have to also be clear on what our point of view are is. Okay, next one. This is actually a, a quote from. This is very important. There's a quote in the Quran that says you know. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, when, when ISIS entered Iraq, there was a lot of demonstrations here in Sweden and um, here in Gothenburg as well. And I met some of the ladies afterwards, maybe a couple of weeks afterwards, and I told them, we're going to have a new demonstration. It's going to, going to come up. And, and her, her answer to me was, well, we already demonstrated. We already told people what we think, and that's enough. I'm not going to go again. And she thinks that one demonstration is enough to, you know, succeed. This is enough. You don't need to do anything. And the politicians are know our views. But this is a, a quote, and it, it, it's, it's actually from, you know, if, if the mountain won't come to Muhammad, Muhammad have to, has to come to the mountain. You know, we have a point of view that, you know, we told you once. We sent you the information. That's enough. You, now you need to work. It doesn't work with that way. You have to constantly go to the mountain where all the people are, and you have to constantly, you know, tell them your point of view. You can't stop talking about it. If you, if you think that one time is enough, then you're fooling yourself. A politician needs to be reminded a lot of times, you know, what the political view is, what needs to be done, and the more you remind them, the more they're going to work towards it. Next one. I'm going to give you the basics of lobbying a politician. So, quick steps, 10 steps on how to work for a Syrian lobbyist. First one, act like a big player. Size does matter. If you think that you're a small dog, then the, the rooms are not going to be open. If you tell people that we're 120,000 people, we're more than 1% of the Swedish people, we dominate a couple of municipalities in Sweden, if you want, if you want to matter, you know, if you want to succeed, you need to talk to us. Our votes matter. You need to be a group that thinks and acts like a big dog. You know? You don't want to be a medium-sized dog, you don't want to be a small dog, you want to be a big dog, and the way you act is actually going to you know, show. If you tell people that you're a big dog, then you are going to be the big dog. The second one, take the initiative, invite politicians. If you think that they're going to wait for you, you know, or they're going to come to you, it's not going to happen. The best lobbyists that I meet always invite me you know, to meet with them and talk to them and take initiative. 
Most of the politicians, I can be frank with you, they, they, they know who they want to meet, but they don't have time to meet them. But if you take the time to actually call them, talk to them, establish a personal relationship, that's when you, that's when you succeed. Third part, co-arrange activities with them. I have a lot of seminars. I can tell you, I get like 20 invites per day during the week, you know? Come to the seminar, do this thing. I can tell you, they go into my trash can immediately if, if it's not, I, I, do, I, I do housing policies. I'm, 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 I'm the spokesperson on housing politics from the party. If it's a housing issue, then I look at it. If it's an Assyrian issue, then I look at it. You know, if it's an issue regarding my district, Gothenburg, then I look at it. Otherwise, I'll throw it in the bin. But what I can do as an Assyrian politician with Assyrian lobbying is, is ask them to be in the panel or ask them to, you know, ask a question. Then they'll feel like they have a role to play and then they'll come. So, don't be afraid of asking people. The biggest thing you can get is a no. So co-arrange. Number four, be prepared. Know their political views. One of the worst things that, that happens to me is when I meet with someone and they're telling me, you know, let's take for example housing policies. Uh, and they're telling me, you know, you should, you, should build, you should do this law in this way. And they haven't read our housing policies. We already think that way. If you, as Assyrian politicians, go to a political party or Assyrian lobbyists, go to an Assyrian, uh, go to a Swedish party and tell them you should think this way about ISIS, and they already do, then they're going to think you're, you know, not that very smart. So you need to be prepared. You need to need, know the policies of the political po politicians that you want to, you know, uh, affect. You need to know their their views already, and you need to be able to change their views. You know, in order to do that, you need to know their views. So so be. Prepare, know the political views. The fifth one that's very important, make them take political stands. You know, it, the best thing for a politician is when they don't have to answer. You know, it's, it's honesty. You know, if, if, if you don't know the issue where, where around, then you're not going to, you know, get involved in it. But if you ask the political, let's for example say, the Syrian uh, Federation of Sweden, I, I, I told them to, you know, make a survey during the elections in 2014, give them your, you know, most important political views that you want to have, uh, you know, their knowledge of it, and then they have to answer. And if they answer, you know, they have to take a stand, and then they have to be prepared to meet the voters, 120,000 Swedes, Swedish Assyrians, who have their views, and you need to affect them, you know. They, they'll know. For example, uh, what we did, I did, for example, during last year, is I, I put a motion into the Swedish parliament to uh, acknowledge what's happening, ISIS, as a, as a genocide. I did it personally, no one else did. I did a private motion to the Swedish parliament. What happened is that it was taken up by my party and two other parties, and the rest of the parties said no. And now all the Syrian Swedes know that five of these parties don't want to acknowledge what's happening in Iraq and Syria as genocide. And that matters when they're going to vote. That does matter. So that's very important. Make them take a political position, use service, whatever. Sixth one, establish personal relationships. Whenever someone mails me, you know, and I know it's not addressed personally to me, I won't even answer those emails. I won't even answer those calls. If I feel like the person who I'm trying to lobby me, it, it wouldn't matter who I am. It just matters that I'm a politician. I'm not going to answer that. You know, establish personal relationships. Tell them the stories. If they're not very well informed, then inform them, you know. Instead of seeing, you know, someone who hasn't taken a stand or doesn't understand anything, which is very, you know, if you talk to some of the politicians and some of the Swedish parties, they won't even know the difference between Assyrian and Syrian. You know, they won't know the difference. Don't see them as stupid and useless. See them as people that you can influence. Very important view. And we, we haven't done that in the past. Actually, it's very interesting because uh, I always get the question from Assyrian people. I find it so, I find it very, I laugh at it always, but I don't laugh at them when they're seeing it, but I find it very funny because they're always telling me which political party should I vote for? Which is the best party for Assyrian people here in Sweden? And it's an important issue, but you should not vote for whatever party is the best for the Assyrian people. You should vote for the party that you like the most, and you should tell them and demand that they get better in Assyrian issues. This is the way to work it, not say which party should I vote, because if all of us vote for the same party, which probably would be my party, so, <laughs> but if you only look at Assyrian issues, but what I'm telling you is vote for the party that you believe the most in and demand action from them, demand that they are better in Assyrian issues and demand that they take stance. It's, more, it's really important, because if we all voted for the same party, then no one will, none of the other parties would even be interested in you know, becoming better in Assyrian issues. Um, 
And this is the seventh part. Play the field. Be unfaithful. I mean, don't just, you know, talk to the parties that you know are good on Assyrian issues. In Sweden, I would say it's the Christian Democrats and the Liberal Party that I belong to. In some stances, you know, the Social Democrats can be good as well. But it doesn't matter. You need to influence all of them. You're not a political party like I am. I belong to a political party. I will always tell you to vote for the Liberals. But you are not. You want to influence everyone. And in the, on the European level, especially, you want to influence everyone. Because you know that, you know, if you get one of the party groups there to work for Assyrian issues, then the other ones are going to be, you know, affected as well, and they're going to have to take a stand. So, so be unfaithful, play the field, you know, make everyone talk about Assyrian issues. You don't want just one party talking about Assyrian issues. Number eight, be available and source of information for them. You know, they don't understand, they don't have the right same information because they're not Assyrian, you know. That stance, send them information, give them the knowledge. Don't see them as you know people that you can just throw away because they don't understand. Um, number nine, don't just talk to politicians. Be politicians. This is what I told you before. Don't just talk about to, to politicians. It's better to be a politician. If we had members of the European Parliament, for example, who were asserting, they would be able to influence ten times more and talk to people ten times more than we can from the outside. So actually talking and trying to get more young people, especially, to get involved in, in politics. And if, you, if you're involved in politics, I can tell you honestly that, you, you know, if I only do a certain issues, I will get nowhere. I sit in the party board of my party now, and it's not because of Assyrian issues, it's because of, I actually do other things. I do integration, I do housing policies, I do everything else. I see the Assyrian issues as my heart, as my soul, something that I have to do, but I also see that the best way of becoming successful as an Assyrian politician is not only to talk about Assyrian issues. When I get, I'm, I'm, when I get respected for being good at you know, housing policies, on integration, on migration issues, that's when they're going to see, you know, if he's good at all these things, he's also going to be good in Assyrian issues. I can trust him when he says these things. So this is the way I've been working the field when it comes to Assyrian issues. It's not that I always put my head in and, and try to convince them on Assyrian issues every time. I actually talk about other things more. But when I do talk about Assyrian issues, they listen. And when I say don't just talk to politicians, talk to the media. You know? There's no one in Sweden, I would say, who's better at talking to media like Afram, Afram here, the, the chairman of the Syrian Federation of Sweden. He knows everyone, you know? And because he knows everyone, whenever something happens, he gets it in the media. And who reads the newspapers? Politicians need to read the newspapers. And whenever something gets very active in the media and, 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 and you know, it, it, it gets into the newspapers 10 or 20 times, then also the Swedish politicians are going to understand, maybe this is important, maybe I should have a stand on this issue, maybe I should work this topic. So don't just think that, you know, the fourth element of power in Sweden today is media, and in Europe as well. Work the media, have good relationships with media, because they are, you know, they, they, can, they can be your message bearers, they can get your point out. And number ten is, is extremely important, understand the political process. This is extremely important. I get every year, I get maybe 10 or 12, 15 lobbyists who talk to me in September. And September is when actually during, actually according to the Swedish law, you know, this is when I can send in my motions to the parliament and when my party writes our motions. But trust me, in September, you're late. You know, I've already gone to bed. It's over. I've written everything during the summer. I'm finished. If you want to influence politics, you need to understand the political process. Don't think that you can come in the last hour and ask for changes in my political view. It's not going to happen. When, when things are done, things are done. Be early, be prepared, be understandable of what they know and what they don't know. Also, be very clear of your political views. And, you know, don't, you know, if you're a Syrian, you're only a Syrian. Don't, don't mix it, you know. And also, you know, work the field. It's extremely important. But also be prepared and be informed, know the political process, it's the most important thing. Because you can't influence a politician, for example in Sweden, in September or October when they're finished writing in their motions. You can influence them during spring, because that's when they start thinking of what they should write. And this is when you can offer your knowledge. You can't offer the knowledge when it's finished already. And the same thing when it comes to, you know, holding demonstrations outside of the Swedish parliament when we've already, you know, written our... So for example, the, let's say that there, there's a motion about helping with government aid to, to Iraq. Uh, 
and the motion has already been written, and the, the, the pr proposition from the pr from the government is already written in. If you come the day before the vote and you're demonstrating outside, well, the process is already finished because every party has already taken their stand. It's much better, like the way the Afram does it, he talks to them as soon, uh, even before the preposition comes to the parliament, and actually meets with them, informs them, tells them the story, talks to the media, gets it in there. If you arrange a demonstration 12 hours before the vote or two hours before the vote, you're so late that, you know, it's a waste of time. You need to be early, you need to be prepared, you need to know your, what, what you know, and, and you need to know your numbers, you know. You're one percent of the Swedish people, you need to listen to me. Open the door. Next one. And I just want to finish, I'm going to finish up with this one, because I, I, I think it's, uh, it's actually from uh, Lastening in Sertalia, and it's a, it's a question to, uh, I think it's an Assyrian person, and the question is, how do you usually uh, greet someone? And he says, I always uh, shake their hand, but sometimes I do a fist bump as well, it's, it's all about respect. It's quite funny. But what I'm trying to tell you about this is, have fun. If you're not having fun working with Assyrian policies, or working for the Assyrian issues, or working together, you're not going to get anywhere, you know. In politics or in, you know, lobbyism, if you don't like what you're doing, if you don't, if you don't feel confident about what you're doing, if you don't believe in yourself, and if you're not having fun with the people you're working with, you're not going to get anywhere. You know, I made it to the Swedish Parliament with the help of a lot of Assyrian youth here in Sweden and here in Gothenburg especially, and I had a great time with them, and we had fun doing it. We had fun, you know, arranging demonstrations. We had fun, you know handing out pamphlets. We had fun, you know, doing the political work. And that's when you can actually succeed. Having fun together, doing it together, having a common view and a common goal. And I am more than convinced that the Assyrian Confederation of Europe can work well together and that we can succeed on Assyrian issues. Because it's not all always about, you know, achieving the goals like you planned. It's also the road, you know, establishing an identity as a people, establishing, you know, a common common view as a nation is extremely important. You know, it's not always about, you know, reaching the goals. It's also about the journey and about, you know, getting the Assyrian community here together. You might not succeed, for example, in Sweden to get safe for acknowledged by the Swedish government, but you do succeed in bringing the youth together. I've never in my life seen so many Assyrian youth being proud of themselves than what happened with ISIS, after ISIS, because they came together, they showed their proudness, they wore their Assyrian flags in the demonstrations. Still today they're active in Swedish media. I think a lot of the youth in the Assyrian Federation in Sweden are active because of what happened in Iraq, because they saw that they, they were needed and they needed to do something together. And, and being not, not having a nation of our own, we need this as well, you know, having a, a community where we can work together on common issues. And working together is just as important as reaching the goals, you know. And I want to stop there, and, and we have time for questions, but uh, I'm very happy to see you here, I think. So. Thank you.